Welcome to Highline Excel class number 26. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Week 5 Business 214. If you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Week 5 website. Hey, this is going to be a great video because this is what we do so often. We get other people's spreadsheets and we have to hunt through and make sure that they are working properly probably having to fix some problems. Now, uh, directly from experience, you know, the first day I had a, a tax job, Mary Broderick in Berkeley, California. She gives me a spreadsheet the last person that worked there made, and I looked through and there were a lot of problems. So, of course, I, I went to my boss and said, hey, boss, do you mind if I change some of this? And she said, oh, yeah, sure, and, and fixed the thing. Uh, and sure enough, by the end of the day, it had already paid dividends. So here we have a spreadsheet here. And we just got to look at it, and uh, we can already see there's some problems, like maybe the column's not wide enough, right? Maybe we need to do some formatting. But then there's formulas, too. One quick way to look at all the formulas is to control tilde. Now, the tilde is the little accent, a little squiggly accent. It is to the left of the number one, control tilde. And then you can see all the formulas. We can already see there's a problem there because they're using plus, plus, plus instead of sum. Uh, they're not using the round function. Um, they have a number hard coded in uh, and all sorts of other problems. I'm going to control tilde. Remember, that is a toggle to see all the formulas. In a small spreadsheet like this, I might also just go through and either look here or look here. Notice, oh, well, let's fix the columns first. So I'm going to double click here. That one's looking better. Maybe if I want some uniform column widths, I would go ahead and highlight D to H like that, and maybe pick the biggest one and click and drag a little bit so they're all the same size. By changing, by highlighting all the columns and then clicking one and changing it, it changes all of them. Uh, oh, I can see that this is hanging out there, so maybe I'll do it a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more right there. Scroll over a little bit so I could see this. Uh, and some that that looks all right. Maybe we do some formatting. Maybe we want some labels again. That maybe this isn't so the formatting is not as important, but it might help a little bit. Something like that. I might highlight the whole table. How do I highlight the whole table? Control asterisk. Control asterisk on the number pad. Also, uh, how about formatting? Uh, th this is money, so there's some dates, sales, expenses. It looks like we have some assumption tables and formulas inside. We definitely want to show more decimals because this is in pennies. You can see there's a decimal showing here and none over here. We probably also want to indicate our unit, which would be dollar sign. I'm going to highlight the whole table here and control one, control one. Number category, currency, I'm going to select currency. So there's two problems here. We want to see the decimal and perhaps we want to see the unit. Click OK. Sometimes it's traditional to have the unit just at the top because it, the rest of the table clutters up. The point of the unit is to tell the viewer that, hey, this is what unit it is. Control 1 to highlight there. Actually, let's uh, keep the bottom line. Sometimes the bottom line we keep it so we just remove the dollar signs from there. Control 1. Uh, none. Now, um, but down here, definitely a problem. Let's uh, control one. Let's do percentage. And you can see, look at that. Right now, we're showing 0.3. We're getting tricked by formatting 0.4. Immediately, when I show uh, decimals, I'm going to show two decimals like that. Click OK. You can see that it really wasn't 0.3. It's uh, 0.25, or the formatted uh, version of it, 25%. Maybe I'll uh, do the same thing here. Watch this. I'm going to highlight that and get my paintbrush would be home right there. Click right there. Highlight the whole table. Control asterisk. Now, uh, just looking through here, it looks like there's a problem here. You see how these are not all aligned the same? I'm going to click and drag. Oh, look at that. I'm clicking there, looking right there. I'm clicking there. Oh, there's an apostrophe. For whatever reason, this is text. That is not good. I'm going to just uh, edit this. 
get rid of that. There's other ways to uh, convert this back to a number we saw in a video just a couple uh, minutes ago. So now I'm going to click here and do my format painter and then click right there. Ooh, it's still looking like it's text. Control 1, custom. Looks like it's OK there. Click OK. Now to just test to see if it is actually a date or text, I'm going to control tilde. That is our uh, toggle. It not only shows you formulas, but now we can see the serial numbers here. But this one is uh, not a serial number. That's text. I'm going to control tilde. I don't want to get stuck in that mode. I'm going to try a trick. I'm going to hit F2 and then Enter. That didn't work. I'm going to uh, just type 1, 2, 2009, 1 slash 2 slash 2009, control enter, and that did the trick. So we, there was a date entered as text, and we had to convert it back. I'm going to start looking through these formulas. Okay, these are number inputs. Ah, oh, look at that. That's definitely uh, not uh, good. We don't want to add like that. We want to do Alt equals, auto sum. So I'm going to Alt equals, and that ought to uh, work. I'm going to click here in F2, tab, here in F2, tab, uh, F2, tab, F2. So all of those formulas look good. I'm going to click over here, F2. Oh, that one's definitely not good. We want to have, by the way, th the problem with our, we had plus, plus, plus over here is because if we inserted any uh, rows, that formula wouldn't update. And it takes longer when you have plus, plus, plus. Here, the problem is, again, it might take t a longer to type in a formula like this, especially with lots of expenses. And if we inserted an extra column with another expense, that formula would not audibly, automatically update. I'm going to leave that, that, that one there. I'm going to hit Escape, Enter, F2. That one's looking, do, looking good. Enter, F2. Oh, look at that one. That one's got the wrong range. right? So we're adding the uh, too few expenses. Enter, F2, Enter, F2, Enter, F2. I'm going to come up here since that one's correct. Escape, I'm going to just click and drag it up instead of retyping that there. Now uh, let's look in the heart of this table. I'm going to hit F2. There's a couple problems with this. You don't want to hard code your percentage in. If that number is a variable number which changes, forget it. That is not correct. You want to link it to there. And it's not using the round function. Remember, you use the round function one, two, three reasons if you are multiplying or dividing decimals, you are required to round, which you are with money, and you're using it in a subsequent calculation, which we are. We're trying, this formula right here is using all of those. Now there is a caveat, when people do budgets, you know, they don't really care if it's a few pennies off, but when you're doing payroll and things that are exact, you got to use the round because these, the sum function, if you don't use the round here and you're multiplying dividing decimals, uh, you could easily be off a few pennies. Uh, let's look at this formula right here. This formula, the problem, they're using the round, but look, they had a relative cell reference here in absolute. That means that they had to, at min minimum, create one, two, three formulas. So they're not using mixed cell references, which would allow them to create all of the expense formulas with just one. Let's look in this last one here, F2. That one. And this is common. Also, people create all 15 formulas individually by hand because they don't know anything about the, the cell references, that there's absolute or mixed. So I'm going to fix. There's one, two, three, four problems with these expense formulas. I'm going to fix them all at once. Highlight the whole range. And then just in the act, you don't even have to hit delete. In the active cell, I'm going to say equals round. Go get that cell reference right there. And this one's locked going left to right across the columns, because I'm going to copy it across the columns. So I hit my F4, lock it across the columns. But when I go down, I need it to move relatively to the next one and the next one. So that will work just fine. Times, and then there's our assumption table. Assumption table orientated correctly. Same as the labels, horizontal, horizontal. So we're allowed to use mixed cell references. F4, F4. Oh, dollar sign in front of the number means locked as it copies down to use this expense one percent, 
But when it copies across the column, the green one will move to the next expense. Comma, and we have to use two because we're rounding to the penny. Close parentheses. And now we control enter. We instantly fixed all four of those problems. Now let's see what else, what other problems uh, we can find here. I'm going to look at uh, these labels over here. I think when we looked up here earlier, if I, oops, click there, I can see a formula tab. Oh, there's no formula there. Oh, there's a formula there. Oh, yeah, how whoever built this kind of partially got it right. If you've typed in labels here and they're the same up here, why bother retyping them? So really, that formula right there, which is you can't see E12. If I copy this over, now it's going to be F12 down here. That way, if I ex uh, change any of these, right? Um, if I change any of these, then those will update up there. Control Z Z because I want those expenses. Finally, the last thing I can find is that right there. Merge and center. That's just a bad idea all around. Now in 2007, Excel. Merge and center is a little bit better than earlier versions. So things like creating formulas uh, and inserting columns works most of the time. In earlier versions, it doesn't. You cannot do a formula, for instance, a chart label with a formula based on this label here if the cells are merged and center. It's also hard to cut and paste. So you want to avoid merge and center like the plague. Control 1, and the alternative you want to use is under alignment, you don't want to have merge and center. You want to uncheck that, and you want to do center across selection. Click OK. All right, so that looked like uh, 16 things that we found and fixed. And uh, the list is down here. All right, uh, we'll see you next video. We have one more exciting topic for this chapter, custom number formatting and how to use it to format cells, but also using functions. See you next trick.